Let's get started with Qt 5.3 for WinRT. Open up Qt Creator. And first, check that the WinRT plugin under Tools, About Plugins, is active. If not, activate it. Take a look at the automatic kits. You'll see that there is one for Windows Phone ARM, Windows Phone x86 emulator, and Windows 8.1 x64 modern UI. You may also want to check that your emulator kit has a device set. Let's open an example. The Cute Quick Touch example looks like a good choice. Select the kits you want to use. In this case, we'll try out all three. Start by testing the Windows Runtime Kit. As Qt Creator doesn't support debugging for WinRT apps, you might as well run in release mode. Hit play. If this is your first time working with Windows Store apps, or your developer license has expired, you should now log in to renew it. Okay, that's set. And hopefully you'll see an app appear in the modern UI as it did for me. So far, so good. Let's test out the emulator. It seems to start, but this app is giving us trouble. As Qt Creator doesn't yet support Windows Phone debugging, we'll need to switch to Visual Studio to solve this one. Open a command prompt and change to your build directory. For fresh projects, it's a good idea to use the Visual Studio command prompt and add Qt to your path. Since I have already used this build directory, I'll just invoke the commands directly. So what we need to do is run qmake dash tp space vc. That instructs qmake to create a project file for Visual Studio from a template. Then we'll add the configuration parameter config plus equals when deploy Qt. That will instruct our Visual Studio project to invoke the Windows Deployment Convenience tool so that Qt can be packaged with our application. You can, of course, add this to your project file as well. Finally, we insert the path to the project. This is only necessary for shadow builds. Now open the build directory in File Explorer. There you should find a vcxproj file to open. Since this project is for Windows Phone, I will open it in Visual Studio 2012 for Windows Phone from the Windows Phone 8.0 SDK. Now that we're in Visual Studio, we can select an emulator and click Run. Again, our app has some trouble. We can see that this is because no shaders could be compiled. To fix this, simply run Qt D3D service. It comes with Qt for WinRT. Qt D3D service will monitor the application and compile Direct3D shaders as needed. After restarting the app, we can see that the shaders have been compiled and our Qt Quick app is now working. Let's move to an actual device. Due to the way the Qt build system works, you'll need to generate another Visual Studio project file for the ARM make spec. Do this just like we did before. In this case, we'll use the path to our QMake in the Windows Phone ARM installation. Back in Visual Studio, connect your phone and give it a spin. If you receive a message like this, check your deployment settings. You may have a disabled checkbox under Deploy. To solve this, simply save the solution and reopen it. Then check the settings again and make sure deployment is checked. Now things should be working. Remember to keep Qt D3D service running so that those shaders can be compiled.
When finalizing your app, you'll want to package those shader binaries for distribution. Return to the command prompt for your build directory and run the following command. The path to your Qt installation slash Qt D3D service dash dash list dash binary dash dash qrc dash dash device zero dash dash app and then your app ID which can be found from the application manifest. Finally, type in a name for this cute resource file that will be generated. Let's say shaders.qrc. This will generate a cute resource file with all of the binaries listed for device zero, which is your physical device, and the application ID marked in the manifest. Next, regenerate your Visual Studio project using the command you used earlier with the additional option of your shader resource file. That's resources plus equals shaders.qrc. After reloading the Visual Studio project, you can see that the shader binaries are now listed in the application's resources. If you close Qt D3D service, you should be able to still run the app from the device without hitting any missing shader binaries. Now our app is ready to package for the Windows Store. Let's open the Store Test Kit to make sure the package looks OK. If we run the automated tests, we'll see that the API tests pass. You can navigate to your release directory to find the finished Zap package for uploading to the Windows Phone Store. With the Windows Phone package done, let's take another look at the modern UI app. For this, I'll be using the Qt Quick Forecast application. Notice that a number of changes to the project file have been made to account for WinRT's manifest. I've added icons as well as network capabilities. One issue you may encounter when submitting to the Windows Store is that any application using the network must provide a privacy policy link in the settings charm. As there is not yet a Qt API for this, you can reuse the code in Quick Forecast for your own app. As you can see here, we've created a WinRT Charms object and connected its item clicked signal to a Lambda function, which opens up our privacy policy in a web browser. When running this, we can see how the privacy policy link appears in the settings charm. For final packaging, we'll again switch to Visual Studio. Follow the same instructions as before, but note that Windows 8.1 does not require pre-compiled shader binaries. In Visual Studio, switch to Release and build your app. Go to Store, Create App Packages, and indicate that you wish to upload the package to the store. Sign in with your Microsoft account. Choose or reserve an application name. Then, customize any packaging settings, such as the application version, and create the package. After the package build step completes, you can optionally run the certification tests locally on your machine. The test takes a few minutes and will launch your app locally several times. If all goes well, certification should pass. If it does not, the XML output from the certification kit will help you track down any issues. Now you have a new package to upload to the Windows Store dashboard. Good luck!